Hi, I'm David. Today, to coincide with the Scalar 2.8 release, we're going to have a look at making an anime style track, which is based on an anime quartet and lots of the new content in Scalar 2.8. There's loads of new content in Scalar 2.8 expressions, bass lines, bass sounds, quartets, artist quartets, and we're going to make an anime track, as I said, and we're going to have Scalar generate all the parts and use most of its internal sounds. And finally, we're going to actually have one of Scalar's melody feed a vocal AI software to come up with a AI generated vocal in this video. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at making the track that we were just listening to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up an instance of Scalar 2. Um, and in Scalar 2.8, there's a bunch of great new content. If we look in the uh, chord set category we've got ambient chords we've got anime chord sets which we're going to focus on today we've also introduced um, some really cool synth divisi four parts so they designed to work with the multi-voice output and as opposed to the straight divisi four part which probably were more focused on orchestral these are as defined focused on synthesis and they're really really good to send out to four different synths be it arps leads etc etc We've also got Latin jazz, really nice new Latin jazz chord sets. We've got movie theme chord sets, and they're really, really nice if you're scoring and you're looking for a, a theme to start with, uh, be it noir, mystery, love, fantasy, really, really nice chord sets. Um, and we've got reggae chord sets, which are uh, really very authentic reggae chord sets, and again, um, by popular demand, some J-pop and k-pop quartets written by appropriate composers which we're really excited about uh, in the artist quartets we welcome lloyd brown and pablo sanchez who are two of my favorite artists thank you very much to those guys for um, joining the skater family they're really cool quartets well worth checking out uh, we've got a bunch of expressions two new expressions in bass we've got edm bass we've got melodic bass we've got side chain bass which are kind of designed again as per the title to be used with uh, side chaining um, and in phrases we've introduced um, more common phrases so if you go into progression you'll see 11 to 20 are all new phrases and in rhythms um, there's a bunch of new rhythms common rhythms which go with all the other common sets in expressions and phrases and we've also introduced some rhythms to fit different time signatures such as seven four and nine four there's a new slap bass sound nine japanese scales i believe joshua casper has done a um, video on specifically on the content over on the plug and boutique channel so do check that out um, okay i'm going to uh, just uh, click on the s logo i'm going to clear the state i'm going to start by making our anime track um, and in the categories here you can see they're now grouped by uh, instrument type we've got synth and we've got substantial um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into songs and as I said anime and we're going to choose anime one so here's the anime chord sets yeah they're all very very cool chord sets but we're going to there's 10 there but we're going to focus on that first one um, that kind of third chord and sixth chord are kind of designed as passing chords. So I'm, I'm just going to skip those just to make a straight eight part chord progression. Um, skip that third one. Skip that sixth one and I will bring in these uh, remaining four chords as my chord progression. So I'm going to bind that so I can write some trigger notes. Okay, cool. I'll just write those trigger notes in. Okay, so here are the trigger notes. The only thing to note is that they're all a bar long, but the second, fourth, sixth, and eighth chords are just coming in one beat before you can see them. Just coming in a beat before the bar. So let's have a listen to that. I'll put the metronome on so we can have a listen. As you can see there, they are triggering those chords down the bottom. Okay, 
Okay, cool. I'm going to call this chorus because that's going to be our, our main part. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to maybe just write a different section. Let's say we, we write an intro section. Okay, so I'm just, I'll just add a pattern straight in here from section C. And as I said, I'll call it intro. Um, as it's an intro, I'm just going to drag that so it comes before the chorus. So we've still got our chorus chords there. And I'm going to um, start with an intro. So I might start with that C major added 13th because it's a very anime style chord. So I'll just drag it in there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some chords um, using some of Scalar's different modes. So if I go into the chord page, you can see that it will just say, okay, here's some other variations. And I'm going to pull in, let's grab the C minor seventh. Yeah, just to be a little bit different for the intro. First thing that we notice is the voicing is very different. That's quite high, that's much lower. So I can just right click on the um, initial chord that we had. I'm going to extract the voicing and I'm going to right click on the C minor seventh and I'm going to apply the voicing. So that now that gives me a much smoother voice leading between the two chords. Great, so what I'll do now is I'll go into suggest mode to ask Scalar to help me find more chords that fit that chord progression. I really like this part as this is kind of an AI themed video if you like because we're going to try some AI generated vocals later on. Um, this is um, one of the most AI led parts of Scalar where it effectively looks at all the chords within Scalar, the artist chords, the song chord sets and it says well if you're using those chords um, um, based on the database of chords and chord progressions we suggest these are your options and they're really cool and they and they can also be further defined by selecting things like, as you probably know, I can say tonal, but I'm going to stick in per scale. Um, you can see that um, already by pulling up anime one, it's told me the scales that could be in A Dorian, Ritsu, A, E minor, G major, B Phrygian, etc., etc. So it could be in the E minor scale, the A Dorian mode, or the G major scale. I'm not really going to be defined by scales now. But this particular scalar, having pulled up anime one, it said you are in a Dorian mode. That's how the suggest mode is working. Now I'm going to click minimize movement. That's important because I want the voicing to be smooth as I add the chords. Okay, so in suggest mode, kind of suggesting there. Straight off the bat, I think the first one sounds really nice. So I'm going to pull in that B minor seventh. Um, and now it's suggesting uh, based on this chord here and um, yeah I kind of like that E minor over B yeah that sounds really good so I'm going to pull that in uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just repeat these three chords and I'm actually going to go back to my original just to finish somewhere within the anime chord sets just to be safe that sounds great. I'll finish on that uh, D6, which is a sus2 with a flattened fifth for one of a cleaner explanation of a chord. Um, and so now I've got my intro chord set. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'll close suggest mode and I'll come into the pad mode. And you can see I've got my intro chords. And then into my chorus. Okay, great. So just by grabbing the anime chord set, bringing in specific chords, whichever ones I liked, using suggest mode and getting Scalar's AI to help me come up with some other chords that fit my progression, I've, I've got a very anime sounding um, chord progression. And what I want to do is I want Scalar to switch between the two. Obviously, now that I'm in pad mode, I've got the intro and chorus, and you can see there's two key switches there. So I can switch between the two as I click that C1 and D1, you can see it switching over here. So I'll just write those key switches in. So this is going to be the chorus. Um, and we said that that key switch was D, didn't we? So that's going to be the chorus. Um, and I'll move that over. And what I'll do is I'll write the intro chords, but I'm going to instead of making them, um, I'll still follow this having the second chord kind of come in 
uh, one beat early, but I'm going to make the chords just the same, but twice as long. Um, in fact, probably the easiest thing I could do is is bring that first chorus chord set. This is going to be my intro, and in Logic, I can just actually hold the Option key, and it'll stretch out those MIDI notes. I might have to make a couple of adjustments because it's made um, those uh, notes that start early twice as early. That's fine. I can drag them all back. Yeah, and I can grab those chords and I can force legato, can keep, um, and then I can come into my key switch and say actually trigger, trigger the intro. That should work. Let's have a look. So these should be triggering my intro chords because the key switch is saying play the first one. I'll have a look in Scatter in a minute. Um, the intro, and then here it's kind of going into. Um, the D chord switch and saying, okay, now play the, the chords. Um, hopefully that works. Let's have a listen. We'll keep it in pad mode. It needs to stay in pad mode for it to work. Here we go. Should switch over with this one here. Here we go, should switch. Okay, so that's that's worked really nicely. So I think I'll start to pad out the tune a little bit now that I've got my, my chord progression, I've got my intro and my chorus. So what I'll do is I'll come and open up another scalar here and I shall bring her across and I might just go back to the first scalar as it's all correct in here. And I'm going to go into sync mode and I'm going to say live sync. So that is start live sync. This will become the leader. And what should have happened is this guy here wouldn't have changed, but my new scalar that I opened up should have those um, chords all correct. You can see it's following, which is really, really great. If I come into pad mode, um, it should have exactly the same chords written intro and chorus. So that's what I want. So just for the intro, I want it to play um, the this second scalar. And what I'm gonna use for this one is I'm gonna go into heavy hitter, so back into the synth category, pull up heavy hitter, and that's just to give me a little bit more of a stabby chord for the intro. So if I copy down just those first, that first region just for that intro, it should now be triggering this perfectly. Here we go, still in pad mode. Yeah, perfect. I play these chords. Yep, great, because we've got no chords triggering that. Back to the um, the chorus in the first part. That's cool. As you can see here on the third track, I'm intending to use a bass um, sound. And I'm going to pull up Scalar, and I'm going to pull up one of the new slap bass sounds. So I'll pull up Scalar. And with this Scalar, I'm going to come into, put the easiest thing for me to is to come into sync mode and it's automatically detected that the first scalar is in leader mode so I can literally just it says do you want me to follow so I'm going to say yes please follow and as you can see the chords populated nicely everything ready to go what's cool about live sync mode as you know that we introduced in scalar 2.7 is it doesn't really affect any of the other sections in scalar so it enables me to start changing things around but keep these chords the same so as I said, I'm going to come into the bass category. We're going to pull up the new slap bass internal sound. And I might pull up a bass performance because that will work better. And let's try, let's go trap bass, trap bass three. Okay, cool, that sounds fine. They do sound a little bit low. So um, what I'll do is I might make some edits here. Um, I might, just so I can hear what I'm doing, I'm actually going to pull the first um, scalar's regions down. So it will do behave the same way in that it should just trigger these 
different pads, which is great. Here we go. Yeah, it sounds a little bit low to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into the edit page. I'm on the intro chords here and I'm gonna select them all and I might just push them up one octave. Okay, cool. Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna put them into their own group because I want the chorus bass line to do something different. So I'll say, okay, that's all group one bass. So it's just taking the, the standard performance that I've got set there and that's fine, um, which was trap three. You can see it. So all of those are gonna play trap three and they were all gonna play an octave up. So I'm gonna come into the chorus, which still sounded low and I'm gonna push these up an octave and I'm coming to play back performances and this time I'm going to put them into their own group so they'll play something different. If you haven't checked out the Scalar 2 official course, it's well worth doing. It covers all of this in great details, as do the other free videos on our YouTube channel and all the excellent ones that Joshua Casper does over on the Plugin Boutique channel. So what I'm going to do for this section is I'm going to go to a different pattern. So let's say I go Common and basic three. So what should happen if I come back into pad mode, it will now trigger trap three and should change for the chorus. Here we go. Yeah, so that's really cool. So the baseline changed all just by basically going to the intro, putting them in their own group and coming into the chorus, putting them into their own group and changing. Just recall that if you're using those key switches, you do have to stay in pad mode. That's what makes it all run smoothly. Okay, time to start coloring it up. Now that I've got my baseline and I've got my chords, I'm going to um, come in and add a scalar performance just to give me a little bit of motion. So let's pull up another scalar and just to get those chords easiest thing for me to do here is come into sync mode and just say follow please follow the leader if you like um, and there's the chords that i require um, i'm going to pull up one of the sounds that we introduced in scalar 2.7 the lo-fi sound and i'm going to go into the edit page probably a good idea now for me to pull down these chords so we, everything's going to trigger the same chords and i'm going to go into edit mode let's just firstly if we start off straight in a pad mode with those sounds yeah it's not really doing anything it's just playing the chords in lo-fi mode but i want a performance if you like so you know kind of performance i probably want um let's just so i can swap performances like i did with the bass line for the intro and the chorus i'm going to do this in edit mode so here i am i've got the intro chords um, I'm going to leave them as they are. I'm going to um, put them in their own group and give them their own performance. So let's go group one and let's go, let's call up uh, performances um, and we'll go basic performance seven. So here we go. good um, I only selected one chord when I um, put them in that group there so I'm just going to say yeah the rest of you follow that same group so here we go so that should sound better I'll just select them all and unselect the chords great okay I'm um, gonna just speed that up so go twice the resolution Great, that seems to work really nicely. Um, let's come into the chorus and let's select all the chords. Let's put them all in another group and let's choose a different performance. So let's 
go um, performances and we'll go common performances this time I might go chordal one um, and this is going to be for the um, for the chorus obviously um, and I might just um, check out it sounds let's come into pad mode let's cycle around the uh, chorus here yeah that sounds cool uh, they sound a little bit low so I could turn, turn the voice grouping on for the lot but I loved where the first notes were so just for group two I might actually come in and might go into the voice grouping and I might say okay just for the chorus for everything in group two let's go dynamic plus one so let's have a listen to how that sounds back in a pad mode yeah that works nicely so let's have a listen to all of that so we're basically what we're doing is we're playing straight chords here chords there we're having a bass which swaps for the intro and swaps for the chorus and again two different performances for that um, performance that we're pulling up from Scala. Let's have a listen. That's great. So yeah, just by using only Scalar's internal sounds, I've managed to come up with a whole anime chord set. I uh, get Scalar's suggest mode to help me come up with uh, an intro based on that that very anime chord, that C major thirteenth, um, and just use the edit mode to swap performances and bass patterns for the intro and the outro. Um, so, okay, uh, I've got a guitar here and I've got a native instruments, um, picked, picked acoustic, I think it is. Yeah. And I've, um, I've selected the voicing as played. So no voicing generator. I think that was the important thing. And I've left it on Latin pop C is the preset. I know a lot of you like to follow these specifically. So I just give you the instructions, picked acoustic, Latin pop C and change the voicing to as played. And what I'm going to do this time in Logic, I'm going to pull up a MIDI effect. Um, so let's go Plugin Boutique, Scalar Control 2, um, MIDI effect. And of course, you can route to third party instruments and all the other doors. Just follow the instructions online or in your manual. Um, and the lovely thing about um, the sync mode is it works across all instances. So if I, can, if I say follow live sync straight away, you can see those chords populate down the bottom. For the guitar, I only want the chorus to be triggered. I don't want it to play at the start. So I'm going to just move the chorus chords down. I'll solo it. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. Yeah, they sound cool. They sound a little bit low. So again, what I might do is I come into edit mode, make sure I've got the chorus chord selected there. Um, and I'm going to go up an octave and let's try kind of inverting them as well just to give us a little something different so we've pushed them up an octave and we've inverted each chord so let's have a listen to that yeah that sounded good I'll just pull up contact make sure it's all responding nicely yep great Latin pop C so now if I just play that chorus along Cool. I think that sounds really nice. Um, let's just make this chorus section a little bit longer. Um, and in fact, let's say we're going to have a chorus and an outro. So intro, chorus and outro, just to kind of give us a, a little bit of um, variety. Um, what I'll do is I've got, as I normally do, I've got some drums hidden away here. So I'm just going to unhide them and unmute them and let's have a listen to how that sounds. Mm -hmm. 
Just to um, pad it out a little bit, you can see I've got a scalar pad there. Again, I've got um, contact seven um, and in contact seven, I've just loaded analog dreams and the contact instrument and I've selected the bright glamour. Um, and I'm going to, as you can probably guess, I'm gonna pull up a scalar here um, and I'm going to ask it to follow, follow the uh, sync so it gets the same chords sync and it's automatically detected that one's in leader mode so it'll follow and it'll give me those chords there and I'll go into the mod page uh, sorry not the mod page we don't want that we want pad view and I'm going to pull as I'll have these chords running the whole way I'm gonna copy any one of those regions which will have the key switches and should do that absolutely correctly let's have a quick listen Yeah, cool, that worked nicely. Um, I liked how I was opening up the filter in um, Analog Dreams. So I might just come into the automation page and uh, there's the filters there. It's Logic's automatically detected that I was playing with the filter and said, do you want to automate it? In fact, I do. I'm gonna keep it low, but for that second part of the chorus, let's go high and let's come back low and we'll go back high. I think that makes um, makes sense. Let's have a listen to how that sound. I'll just play it here from the chorus, and we should see that filter opening up just to give us a little bit of a kind of an A and B section for the chorus, if you like. Back down like dreams. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I think we've got a kind of anime theme tune going nicely there. Um, it'd be good to maybe get some AI help. And I think, um, as you can see, I've titled the track Scalar 2.8, Making an Anime Track with AI. Um, it's maybe appropriate that we bring in some additional help. And this time I'm going to pull up Yamaha's Vocaloid, Vocaloid 6, which is really cool, really nice place to start to come up with some AI generated vocals. Now, if I was to open it, pull it across you can see that there's nothing there and I'd like Scalar to give me some notes so I'm going to come back into um, my logic file and it'll automatically open up Scalar for me which it does in my sessions that I write because I love using Scalar um, and I kind of was looking for melodies before that I that I thought worked so if I was to um, just to make sure I'm in the same place and have the same chords so if I come in to follow live sync there's the chords that we've been working um, I'm going to go to the chorus chords and I don't want the notes being exported I'm going to export it straight into Vocaloid so I want the notes to be quite quite long if you like so I'm kind of going to come in and say make the chord duration two beats and I'm going to select the melody. So I'll go melody 
Um, theme sounds good. We're working in anime. Uh, let's try theme D all. Um, and importantly here for me in Scalar, I'm going to say, I don't want the chords. I just only want the melody. And now um, I've got this, this chord progression here. So if I go back to opening up Vocaloid, so it's also open there. Okay, so um, I'm going to drag that chord progression straight in. And um, you can see there it's created a new track. Um, and that's the, they're the melody. So um, this might sound a little bit weird, but basically it's taken a melody from theme D all and um, based on the chords I was using. So it should all be nicely in key. And now I should have a melody, could have used anything, but we'll try that one. Okay, let's have a look at what those notes are. That's the melody. And if I hit play. Okay, sounds cool, but it's dropping around a little bit. So, and I want to give it some proper words. So it's not just giving me R's and O's. Um, and just to clean this up, I'm actually going to get rid of these short notes uh, in uh, Vocaloid. Uh, 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 I can see there's some duplicates uh, here, so I'll just get rid of those. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I will extend all those notes and I might just pull up another voice. So let's try Sarah. Um, uh, That sounds cool. That's great. Uh, let's go for an effect. Let's go for filled with sound. That sounds good. Yeah, so how's that melody? Let's just check it. Cool. Okay, that sounds like it's working. I think I need to give it some. Uh, let's go. I need to write phonetically. I love my anime. Anime. Let's try soundtracks. Soundtracks. Obviously, we would probably wouldn't be commercially releasing this, and we might take the lyrical part a little bit more seriously, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to stretch that bar out and I'm going Tracks. to um, let that soundtracks play. Let's, right, let's have a listen to how that sounds. Yeah, okay, good. Um, let's write another note in here, shall we? Just here, make it a little bit interesting. Let's, ooh, uh, let's try yeah, um, instead of ooh, and yeah. sounds good. I'll yeah. just copy that across a few times. Yeah. Um, let's try that. And then what I'll do for the tracks, as it's lasting a long time, really nice in any kind of vocal program. Synthesizer 5 does this, as does um, Vocaloid. I can kind of say, you know, start playing a little bit of vibrato there. It'll update how much vibrato do I want. Just add a little bit of depth. There you go. And I can even kind of change the rate there. So back into Logic, here we go. Yeah, cool. So that's our tune. You can see the markers there indicating the sections. Let's have a quick listen through and I'll open up um, Scalar so we can see it also playing. Here we go.
Yeah, cool. So we got a really cool idea for an anime tune. And I think one of the things that I really liked about that, it was all scalar generated, um, including all the internal sounds really, except for NI's guitar and the pad, which you could have done without, but it was really nice to open up that pad there and have the kind of a nice synth engine to be able to open up that filter on the second part of the chorus. But swapping the performances, swapping the basses, getting AI or scalar suggest mode and its AI to really feed the um, Vocaloid AI was a really cool factor too. Um, obviously, we could really go to town on designing our own vocals and getting some nice lyrics and making it sound a bit realistic. But it just shows you how easy it is with the right programs just to come up um, and um, come up with a tune idea. Um, that's the, all the content. Uh, that's some of the content in Scalar 2.8. Really nice demonstration of how we can use it to come up with an anime idea. It's available at your plugin boutique um, just under your account. Um, the iPad app is also updated, which is really great. Works nicely with Logic Pro. Still some issues on the resizing, but we'll get that um, looked at soon. So lots of new content. Hope you enjoy Scalar 2.8. Thanks for watching. I'll play you your anime tune on the way up.